Hey everyone, it's Gina from Gina K Designs and welcome to Stampin' Chat. I see people coming in from all over the United States and all over the world and I'd like to welcome you to Friday here on the show. So thank you guys all so much for being patient yesterday and uh, moving your schedule to come over and see us today. It's great to have you here. Now, we're having a little bit of a different format today. Not really a different format, but Tom is not here. And today I have my executive assistant, Sammy, at the controls. It's her first time at the controls. So, Sammy, you're doing great. <laughs> I love having Sammy here. Sammy's always my safe place. Um, and Tom had to go help Rena with her car today. So um, he will be back on Monday, I promise. So we won't have guitar today unless, Sammy, do you know how to play the guitar? I don't. I don't. You don't? Okay. <laughs> Sammy doesn't know how to play the guitar. And we didn't even have Sammy's microphone on. I'm going to zoom in a little on myself here. Let's see if I can do that. Can I do that? <laughs> I guess I can't do that. Um, so... Uh, Sammy just got kind of thrown into the chair today. Tom gave her the quick five minute lesson. And uh, so, but she's awesome. She's one of those people that can do anything you ask her once and she does everything perfectly. So she probably knows how to use this product I'm gonna show you today much better than I do. So I'm glad she's here for advice. So today, what I'm gonna show you is, I'm gonna show you this brand new Fun Foam by Simon Hurley and Ranger. Now, some of you probably already have this amazing product. Um, I have not had an opportunity to try it yet, so I'm gonna try it with you guys live. And you know that's always exciting because we never know what can happen. But I heard a lot about it and I watched Simon Hurley's videos. So if you don't know who Simon Hurley is, go to YouTube and put in the name Simon Hurley and his channel will come up and he's got an amazing channel. He's got his own line of products with Ranger, stamps, ink pads, stencils, and this amazing foam, plus a bunch of other cool pastes and things. He's awesome. He's a good friend of my daughter, Rena's, and you guys know that Simon and Rena have done lots of videos together. So check out his channel for lots more ideas on how to use this fun foam. But I saw one of his videos and so I just ran around my house and grabbed things that I could use this fun foam on. So I found this basket and you guys know I love my baskets. I get these at a store called At Home and I also have a link in the things that I love for some of my cute little baskets that I use here. Well this is one of those baskets and it's got a really cool texture on it kind of a basket texture, but it's plastic. So I thought I would try using that. I also stole this out of one of our guest rooms at home. This was covering a big uh, curling iron mark on a dresser, and it is a plastic placemat. I got this at, at home as well. And then I have some stamps here. Of course, you guys know I have holiday tapestry. I also have a stamp set by Argita. I have a stencil. I have some embossing folders to try. I really want to try the screens on my windows at home. I want to try, I've got this cool lattice background on one of my chairs at home, but I couldn't bring those here. So once you guys see how this works, I can't wait to see what you guys find around your house. So let's go to the overhead, Sammy. And this is what the fun foam looks like. First of all, it's a great deal because you get four blocks. Oh, are we freezing? It looks like we're freezing. So what we're going to do is we're going to leave the studio. Ooh. Oh no. All right, hold on. I don't know why that's happening.
you go to my front shop? Sorry, everybody. I know. I hope you guys all didn't bail. I, I apologize. Um, there's something, there's nothing wrong with the internet. There's something wrong with one cord in our system. We've got to figure out why it's doing that. And um, thank goodness Sammy knew what to do and she got us back. So we're back. Um, Tom usually handles that when that happens. So if it happens again, just hang in there with us. We'll go out and we'll come back in. All right, so let's go back to the overhead. So this is, it comes with this fun foam, stamping foam comes with four blocks, which I think is amazing because it doesn't take much to reactivate the block and get it back working again, according to all the videos. And you get four of these. So you can just go ahead and make a bunch of stuff. So I'm going to open this up. I did have to feel one. So I did open my package already to feel it, but I have to feel, I had to feel it. Okay. So it feels super, super smooth. And um, it doesn't feel exactly like a stamp, but it takes ink amazingly well. So according to the instructions, what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to take your heat tool and you're supposed to heat this up. So let's pick a texture that we want to use first. How about if we do something with a, well, let's try this mat. Okay. This mat should be kind of fun. I know that might be really scary looking on the screen, but let's see how this works. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to heat this fun foam. I keep calling it fun foam. It's called stamping foam. I'm going to heat this stamping foam and I want to get it hot. Now it, it doesn't really do anything like when you touch it, but you're supposed to heat it for about five to 10 seconds. So for my first time, I'm going to give it a full 10 seconds and get it nice and hot. And we're just going to try it. And then we're going to try maybe some inking techniques with it too. So let's see how this goes. I won't melt my placemat. <laughs> Thank you, Debbie. <laughs> oh my goodness. This is so much fun. Thank you for sharing the video. And if you guys are watching over on YouTube, I'd love it if you'd give this video a thumbs up. If you want to give it a thumbs down, I'm okay with that. I, uh, I'll i just cry later to Sammy, that's all. But uh, all interaction is good interaction. And if you're new to my channel, please subscribe. All right, I'm gonna turn this over and I'm gonna smash this down and I'm gonna put a little pressure on it. I could try my bubble wrap and see what that looks like, Phyllis. That's a great idea. There's so many things. I mean, I was thinking about like just putting a bunch of like necklaces down and getting that weird chain effect and all kinds of stuff. All right. So let me put my glasses on so I can see what I'm doing here. It can be used a million times, Rose. You can just keep reusing this. Okay. So I've got some texture on there. Now I'm going to get a piece of cardstock. Can you guys see that texture? Okay, I'm gonna get a piece of cardstock. This would be really a cool texture, like in a light color. Let me get a light color. I'll get some sea. No, I'm gonna get um, sandy beach. This would be a very cool texture to maybe not completely ink up and then to like stamp a flower, a silhouette over it. So I'm not like gonna be perfect and try to get the whole thing. I'm just gonna kind of ink it up in a way that makes it just look like a blotch. Okay, here we go. Ready? And remember, we can cut this out later. So if it's not straight, cause it's not clear, it's gonna be totally fine. Oh, look at that. Isn't that cool? All right, you guys know I have to stamp something on that. I gotta run over here and find a good stamp set for this. Okay, I got one, but I got something to stamp on that. So take a look at that. Isn't it awesome? And that's just from this placemat. That's so fun. This is like making your own stamp designs. This block allows you to become a stamp designer. It's amazing. All right, let's put that aside. Yeah, the faded edges make that kind of cool, right? Kind of a cool background for like a masculine card. I'm just using my tidy towel to clean it. Now you can see it's still got all that texture in there, but watch what happens. I saw this on a video, so I hope it works for me. Watch what happens when you heat it again. 
Look, the design is disappearing. See that? It's just all going away. Look at that. So now we've got a clean slate again. Yes, dyes would be great. Um, Bev, no, I don't sell the fun foam in my store, but check your local craft stores first. If you can't find it in your local craft store, I'm going to link it to Simon Says Stamp because um, I know that they have it, and I think they just got a new shipment in. So I'll be linking it in the description. Okay, so now... We have a nice plain block again, ready to use. Oh, that was so much fun. I got to cut this out with a die and make that a card. All right, let me get this placemat out of the way. Now we're going to try something else. Let's try this basket. Look at the texture on this basket. Isn't that cool? Ooh, yeah, drywall tape. Oh, my gosh, there are so many ideas. Yes, Ranger sells it too. I'm going to link it over at Simon Says Stamp, though, because they're doing a lot of really good things right now. They're... um. They're raising money for a, um, a disease called Huntington's disease. And um, that disease is a disease that affects the owner's family, Heidi's family. Her husband has Huntington's disease. And her children have a 50% chance of also getting that disease. It's a horrific disease with no cure. And they're doing a lot of good things to raise a lot of money. So I'm going to link over there and help them out today. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I am heating this up again. And I don't know if more heat is better, but it says 5 to 10 seconds. So I'm trying to count 5 seconds here. I don't know, five seconds seems like a terribly long time when you're trying to heat up your stamping foam or when you're at a swim meet. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is let's let's go right here on this basket, okay? I'm just gonna press into this basket. And I'm like putting a little pressure from the opposite side because this basket's a little flexible, but it's a cool basket. It's kind of like an embossing folder in a way. Ooh, look at that. That looks fun. All right, let's try like a real bright color. In fact, let's do like a blend. So I'll do a little bit of Blue Lagoon. And then I'll do a little bit of Wild Lilac. Let's do a little more Blue Lagoon up here. We'll just kind of blend it into the Wild Lilac. And then we'll use some Passionate Pink down here. Get a little Lilac into that pink. Okay, let's see what this looks like. All right, here we go. And again, I'm cutting my pieces of cardstock to like quarter sheets because I don't want to have to be perfect and try to nail this because I can cut the panel out later and make sure that it's straight. Oh, yeah, it could be a Christmas design, Gregory. You're right. Excuse my head getting in the way, but I'm putting some... Pre oh, that's so cool. Sammy, look at that. It looks... Isn't that pretty? Isn't that pretty? It looks yes. like a tapestry almost. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. That is super fun. That's a nice color combination too, yeah. And it does give you a little bit of an edge there. So if you do a die that's a little bit bigger or you don't have a die, you can kind of use the lines around it to cut a nice little frame. So that's kind of fun. All right, let's try another one. I wanna try um, Holiday Tapestry because I am pretty sure that everybody that's watching this video right now has that stamp set. Okay. And I think you could just take this to the sink. Like if I had a sink in my craft room, I could just take it to the sink and wash it. But since I don't, I'm just using my tidy towel. And remember, this has two sides. So of course, we can get rid of the design just by heating it up again. See, it just, it's magic, it just disappears. Oh my gosh, you guys, you're gonna have so much fun with this. But if you don't want to do that, you can just flip it over and you can use the other side. So let's do that for the next card. All right. 
So for those of you that missed that one, that has such a batik feel to it. I love that. You can use the edges too, Simon, that's so smart, the edges, so you could do like a border. Oh, that's really awesome. I didn't even think of that, see? Hi, Simon, you're amazing. I absolutely love this product so far. I texted Simon earlier and I said, I'm gonna use it and I hope I do you proud because <laughs> I'm nervous, I never did it before. Oh, my bracelets? Oh, that would be cool. Oh, definitely. That would be super cool. Okay, so I probably don't have to go as long as I'm going here, but you know me, I'm being an overachiever. And of course, I don't have anything ready. So let's try, let's try an embossing folder. So if you're using an embossing folder, you can use either side of the embossing folder. I'm going to use the line art side of the embossing folder and not the flat side because I actually want this design to be have more surface to stamp. So it gives you the opposite look. So if you stamp a line art image into it, it's going to be there's going to be a lot more solid color ink and your line art image is going to be white. Okay, so I'm going back over this again because I'm just not sure if I needed to, and I don't want to mess it up. Okay. All right, here we go. I think that's good. So now I'm going to take this embossing folder, and I'm just going to smash that right into it. Okay. Ooh, you know what? I think I feel like I want to turn it over so I can put more of my body weight onto it. There we go. Ooh, it's warm. <laughs> <laughs> it's cold in here. We have pretty bright lights and they're uh, they're cold. I mean, they're hot. And so we have the air on pretty high. Um, now, that's a good question. Somebody asked, if you leave it, does it become permanent? And I'm going to guess no. I'm going to guess it, it never becomes permanent. Oh, I double pressed that when I turned it. So let's redo it so we get a really good look. That's another beauty of this. You don't like what you did, you just do it again. But this one's going to be very cool, I think. Okay. So obviously it doesn't take much heat to activate, so I'm standing here heating it up for like three hours. I don't need to do that. Okay. I'm just going to do one press in there. Give it a good press. And Simon, I probably don't need to press this hard, right? Simon, Simon said, if you leave it for a few days, it still disappears when heated, but it just takes a little more time. Good to know. Thank you, Simon. I'm glad you're here. Okay. All right. There we go. Oh, much better. Much better. Now, it's a little bit soft around the edges. So let's do it one more time because I really want this to be vibrant. Oh, my gosh. And remember, this is the absolute first time I'm touching this. So you can imagine if you practice with it for a day how fantastic you will get at it. Although I do kind of like the blurred edges. So if that happens again, I might just let it go. Just have to make sure I heat them enough too. Okay, here we go. Last time. Third time's a charm. Okay. I need a Chucky tool for this. <laughs> All right, I'll just get around the edges. Oh, this is fun. This is not expensive either, is it, Simon? If you tape it to an acrylic block, you can get even more pressure. <gasps> there we go. Ugh, that is amazing. Okay, here we go. Oh, yeah. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I have a few fall ink cube colors. So I'm going to start with my lightest color, which is Prickly Pear. I'm going to add some honey mustard in there. I'm going to add some faded brick. What's neat too is the ink cubes have a little bit of linen texture to them. So I think that's gonna give it a cool texture as well. And I might go back and add a little bit more prickly pear in there. And 
and then maybe a little bit more faded brick just to get it darker. Okay, guys ready? I feel like this is going to be good. Turn that over because I got ink on me. All right. Ooh, now I feel like I want to use that acrylic block to get the pressure. There we go. Simon, if I'm doing anything wrong, feel free to critique. <gasps> oh, look at that. Oh my goodness. Oh, I just love how like fabricy all this stuff looks. Doesn't it, Sammy? Yeah, I really like that in love control. That is awesome. All right, you guys, just think right now about every single embossing folder that you guys have in your collection right now as we speak and how now you can turn every single one of those into a stamp. Oh, wow, that's amazing. Okay, well, I'm going to be lazy here and I'm going to get a new block just because I don't feel like cleaning that one and I want to keep going with this pro process because I have to try a stencil and then... We have to try some stamps because we got to see what the stamps look like. So here's another one. And then should we use this festive one or should we use a different one? Any recommendations, Sammy? What do you think? You think this will work or, ooh, should we use like a big snowflake one? Yeah, do you want another snowflake? It's one of the snowflakes. All right, let me find a snowflake stencil here. I'm, uh, I'm rummaging through all my stencils. Let's see. I'm not prepared. Snowflake. Oh. Snowflake man. Let's do stellar yeah. snowflake. Stellar snowflake. Okay. So you guys know stellar snowflake is one of our best selling snowflake stencils. And I think that would just be so cool, like coming in off the side like that. That would be beautiful. We could do this one in different shades of purple and blue or greens and blues. All right, here we go. The first thing you guys have to do when you get your stamping phone is cut up about 7,000 sheets of white cardstock because you're just going to want to do this for like three days straight. <laughs> Did you guys recently get, oh yeah, a lot of people jumped into our Christmas in July sale and got the Stellar Snowflake and the Snowflake Mandala. Yeah, you can definitely mist with water. I saw Simon do that. And uh, you can definitely mist it with water. And that would definitely give you even more of a batiki kind of feel, a watercolor feel. I'm going to look at all of these and I'm going to figure out which ones to um, turn into cards. I should make them all cards, but I don't know that I'll have enough time. And I just want to thank Sammy for being here today. Oh, my word. We couldn't do this without you, Sammy. Okay. You probably see Sammy in our Facebook group, if you guys are part of our Facebook group. If you're not and you're on Facebook, come and join us. It's called Gina K Designs and Stamp TV Friends. Okay. All right. Now, I'm going to lay this down. And I'm going to just go in just like that. And I'm going to use my block for a little pressure. This is our big acrylic block. This is for good for, you know, some of our big floral stamps. If you don't have a misty and you don't want a misty or you don't like using the stamping platform as much, you prefer the old fashioned way of acrylic blocking it. <laughs> oh. Okay. It does kind of look like clay, Pamela. You're right. It absolutely does. Simon, um, share your blog with everybody and, so that they know where they can find you or your YouTube channel. There you go. There we go. I see Simon sharing it. If you want to share the link to Simon, you can. Okay. So. Oh, look at that. Isn't that cool? You know that's going to be gorgeous. You know it's going to be beautiful. Okay, so let's go with some light colors on this one. Let me grab my ink cubes here. Let's do um, let's do sea glass and let's do apple mint. Let's see how that looks together. 
Okay, so we'll start with some sea glass. And then we'll do some apple mint. I'm telling you, this foam takes ink <laughs> better than most stamps. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I don't know if this is all going to transfer. It might, but if it does, we'll just kind of make it kind of smushy looking around the outside. But we got to get more sea glass in there. Okay. Okay, here we go. Paper. Where's my paper? Let's do it. So again, I'm just going to stamp it because I can cut this down. All right. My block on here. Mindy was just asking, what about blending brushes on the phone? Mindy was asking if yeah. blending brushes would work. You know, I don't know, Mindy. I haven't tried that. So that is definitely something I will try. I bet they would. Simon, have you tried blending brushes on your phone? Simon will definitely answer. I don't think he left. Oh, look how pretty that is. Isn't that just beautiful? Oh, I love that. That is really pretty. And you could just have a big, bold Christmas greeting on there. Yeah, I don't think the foam gets hot enough to really affect anything, like Simon is saying in there. I don't know if I'm good enough to, to do this, but I'm going to try. I just want to see if I can maybe finish this off here, just up in that corner like that. There we go. It's pretty easy to line up, I guess. There we go. I wanted to finish off that corner that didn't have anything. This way, if we cut it out for a card. Um, I've heard people have cut these down, like to make smaller ones if they wanted to have like blocks of a certain size. And you get four of them. So why not cut some of them down? Probably could use a, you know, some sort of X-Acto knife or maybe even a, I don't know how you do it. Maybe a kitchen knife. You gotta try like Versamark on here and then stamping it and then doing embossing powder. I mean, there's only so much I can do in one live to show you how amazing this is. But, you know, there's, there's a million other things that you can try. So make sure you try it. All right, I think we need a rainbow one now. Definitely need a rainbow. So let's clean this block up with some heat. Let me find the little tag so you guys can see what it's called. I'll put this right here so you can see. It's called stamping foam. You get four, three inch by four and a quarter inch pieces of foam. And Simon just informed us that we can also use the side of it to do borders and things like that. So, super fun. And again, I will link it in the description here at YouTube so you guys can find it quickly and easily. All right, so now that that is all cleaned up, let me get a stamp ready to go here. I really wanted to try this one. You guys know this is like one of my favorite holiday sets is the Holiday Tapestry. I've used this stamp in more videos than is probably legal on YouTube. So I'm going to use this stamp I'm just going to slap it down there, and then I'm going to heat this up again because it cooled off a bit. It shouldn't be frozen, Joyce. If it is, maybe go out and come back in. I think it's still, still doing okay on our end that we can see. Okay. There we go. Nice and hot. And now I'm just going to take this and I'm going to put it right onto this stamp. And I'm going to press down. I know, isn't it fun? Your mind is reeling my mind too, Donna. When I saw this on, you know, Simon's little, uh, he did like some little clips, like promo clips on it when it first came out. And I saw that and I thought, okay, I need that. And then 
it sold out in like four and a half seconds. So I never got to get any. And so now I had to get it. Okay. All right. Ooh, that's pretty. All right, let's do like a rainbow blend, shall we? Let's just start with some yellow. We'll do yellow in the middle. I always like to start with yellow. And then we'll do a little orange over that. We'll do some red. Okay, I need to re-ink my red velvet. <laughs> I use this one a lot. I just love how it looks like fabric. That to me is just the coolest, coolest thing. Go back in with a little more yellow. And if you ever do something like this, you could just rub off any color that gets on your ink cube on some scrap paper. All right, we'll get a little green in there. This is Lucky Clover. We'll go back in with some yellow again. And then some turquoise. -y. Now we could spritz this with water. Should we try that? Why not? Let's try it. Oh, I'm nervous. Okay, I have the Tim Holtz Distress Sprayer. These are not yellow. Mine's yellow because it's a thousand years old. I bought it the day it was released, like really a thousand years ago. Okay, so I'm just going to spritz some water on that to kind of blend the colors together. And then I could do this on watercolor paper. Here's some watercolor paper. Let's try it on watercolor paper and see what happens. Might be a little runny, we'll see. I did spritz a lot of water on there, but who knows? Oh, that's so pretty. I gotta dry that, because I don't want that to go anywhere. I want it just like that. Guys, doesn't that look just like a batik fabric? I know I keep saying that. I gotta say something else, but that's amazing. That's so pretty. Love it, love it, love it. All right. That one is gorgeous. Okay, look at these. I mean, look how much fun we've had already with just, <laughs> I mean, come on. That's some fun stuff. Um, holiday tapestry should be back in stock in the next couple of weeks. We sold out of all of our holiday stuff, not all of it, but a lot of our Christmas stuff with our big sale. So, and it's taking our manufacturers several weeks to get us caught up. Okay, so let's see how this cleans. I'll definitely need a sink when this is all done. I might use the other side for my final one. And then we'll pick two and we'll make just simple cards out of them. I'm going to use the other side. Okay, so let's just, this had some little dents in it from me from earlier. This is great. Simon Hurley, you're a genius. I don't know if anybody told you that yet today. So I have a stamp set here by Argita that's called, let me grab it here. Flowers for you, and it's got this big floral design, and I'm wondering how this one would look. So I think I'm just going to give it a try. Now, this might be too intricate for this, but you never know. So let's give it the old try and see what happens. This is bothering me. Let me get a different piece here. It's all getting warpy and it's wet. Okay, that's better. All right, so yeah, I'm not sure. I don't, I, you know, I've been stamping for a long, long time, and I just, I don't remember seeing anything that worked like this. This is pretty amazing. I'm not saying that it, it, there wasn't something out there a long time ago, but 
I don't remember anything working like this. Very fun. I know there was like some rubber kind of thing that you could stamp other stamps into and make an impression, but this stuff feels different. It's got a really neat feel. It's light as air. It feels almost like styrofoam when you take it out and you're thinking, how is this ever going to work? And then it works. Okay. I kind of feel like you can start to see some ridges in it when it gets hot. All right. I'm going to put this down here like that. And then I'm going to put my block on top and smash it in there. Okay. Well, Simon, this is a great, great thing you came up with. So we love it. And we love you here. And we're proud of you. <laughs> okay. And welcome to everybody who's just joining us. Thank you for making time for us on a Friday. I know a lot of you were probably looking around for us yesterday, but uh, we were unable to make it yesterday. I had an eye doctor appointment and I had to get my eyes dilated. And you should have seen me. Sammy saw me. It was scary, wasn't it? It was pretty scary. She won't say it, but okay. Oh, that's pretty. All right, let's see what this looks like. So I feel like I want to do a light color. So let's go back to like sea glass for this. And we'll just, did I even cut enough cardstock? I didn't expect this to be so easy. All right, we're going to do some sea glass here. Oh, wow. Well, like I said, I've been stamping a long time and I thought I had every product that there is, but this kind of thing absolutely escaped me. So I am so glad that Simon brought it out. Okay, here we go. Once again, get it down there, put my big stamp on it. <laughs> he is an amazing guy. Yeah, seriously, yesterday, you should have seen, uh, so I, you know, you guys know I'm diabetic. I'm a type 1 diabetic, insulin dependent. One of the scariest things to me about diabetes is the thing where diabetics can go blind. So I'm kind of a freak about my eyes, and um, my doctor moved my appointment up. I had it scheduled for late in the afternoon so I could do a live yesterday, and they moved me up. They said, we can move you up, or we could move you to a different day, and we have something in I forget what they said, October. And I'm like, no, no, no. My my wonderful friends on YouTube and Facebook will understand if I postpone for a day. But um, I went yesterday and I will, I will just let you guys know that everything was looking really good. My retinas were looking good. My optic nerve was looking good. So I'm in good shape. So that's good. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? It's so different too. That's what's really cool. I mean, let me grab this stamp here. You can see what this stamp looked like before, how delicate it was. And it just gives you a whole different look. Like I, I don't even think that, I wouldn't even think that's the same stamp really. It's beautiful. All right, so now we kind of have an idea of how to use this stamping foam. This is what it looks like. It comes in a bag with um, four blocks. You get four blocks. Here's the last two that I didn't use, and here are the first two that I have totally used. I'm going to wash them with a little bit of, I'll probably, because I'm a little freak, I'll probably go, to, go wash them with a little bit of soap and water, and then I will just reactivate them. By heating them, it takes the design out of them. And I'm sure that once they're clean, just like a rubber stamp, even if they stain a little bit, once they're clean, uh, the ink isn't going to transfer. So, you know, if they end up looking stained like this, but they're clean and they work, I don't care. That just means they're well-loved. And you know I'm going to love these a lot. I'm going to give them a lot of love. All right, so let me just show you the ones I made before. This one I made with a placemat. This one I made with this basket. This one I made with an embossing folder. This is an embossing folder by Darice. This one I made with the um, Stellar Snowflake stencil. 
by Jeannie K Designs. And this one I made with holiday tapestry and I spritzed water on this one. So, and I used it on watercolor paper. Okay. So I think, I definitely feel like I should do something with this. Although these, should I make a Christmas card? And like, I think I'll use these. Maybe I'll use all three of these. I love them all. I should make cards out of everything. But I only have so much time left and I got to whip out three cards in 15 minutes and I think I can do it. I think I can do it. So the first thing I want to do is I want to get my die cutting machine out and I'm going to cut these panels using some of the master layouts dies because for me, that's going to be the easiest way to get a straight cut. Um, you know, if you're using a paper cutter, it might be a little more difficult because you know, as you're going around, I don't know, I, I find it easier to just line the die up and go. And I did bring all my dies over here and then I don't know where I put them. So let me look around my table and see where I possibly put them. This is the time where I go, Tom, come help me find them. And he comes over and he finds them right away. So I won't do that to you, Sammy, because I found them. So I think I'm going to use Master Layouts 1 because I really want to use a lot of this pattern. I don't want much of it to be taken away. Although, this is Master Layouts 1. Let's look at Master Layouts 2 because that it might still make it in there. And I do like the stitching on Master Layouts 2. So let's take a look. Yeah, Master Layouts 2 will work. Okay, so we'll use Master Layouts 2. And again, this one, it's not going to matter so much if it's perfectly centered because I made sure that I didn't go all the way to the edge because I wanted it to look kind of scruffy like that. What I am trying to do is make the design itself straight. So we'll see if that works. Here we go. And this one out. Thank you guys. Thank you guys so much for all your support with my appointment yesterday. So you can see that looks just nice and straight and ready for a stamp. Okay, so I really like this die for this. So let's cut this one out. Simon, this is the perfect size for my master layouts too. I just want you to know that just in case. You don't have those. Hint, hint. <laughs> Giving Simon a hard time. Okay. That looks straight. Yes, it does. Straight enough. Will I be giving you sneak peeks of the new release? Yes, I will. Those sneak peeks are going to start this weekend. I'll be doing sneak peeks all weekend long. Look how pretty that looks. I love that. I'll be doing sneak peeks all weekend long. And then Monday night is our release. We'll be having our release party here on YouTube and Facebook Live. We'll have some of our illustrators will be joining us. We have a brand new kit coming. We also have two, two brand new master layouts die sets. And I am excited about both of them. We have another little surprise too coming that I think is really fun. And it works with one of the master layouts sets. So that's fun too. All the fun stuff coming. Okay. So I cut this one out too. They really look kind of cleaned up and nice when you cut them out, don't they? Love it. The leaves are one of my favorites too, actually. Okay. I'm going to cut this one too. I just, I love this one with the basket. I feel like I should cut it. I won't cut them all because I know that that's just time consuming and you guys want to see a finished card, but you know, this one is really pretty. You know what this one looks like to me? Probably one of you said this in the comments already, so I'm not trying to steal your idea, but this one looks to me like a winter sweater. So it would be a really, really pretty Christmas card because it, it has a snowflakey sweater kind of hat kind of feel to it. And that's just this basket that I got it at home. So if you guys need a basket, this one is linked in my things I love tab over on the website. Okay, so now I'm going to use the smaller die of the two, which I just mixed up all my master layouts ones and twos together. So I think that's the right one. <laughs> oh, 
Sammy, I don't just need you in the office. I need you here on set to keep me straight. Let me look. Does that look right? Yeah, that looks pretty right. Okay. So we're going to cut out some black panels because you guys know me. I really like using a black background. Do you know what Wendy in our office, our customer, one of our customer service reps said? She said, maybe you could try a different color other than black for the background. She said that. Yeah, I know. I gasped too. I was like, <gasps> she's like, what? I. She was newer at the time, so she <laughs> she didn't understand my love affair with black cardstock, <laughs> to her defense. <laughs> okay, yes, right, Stephanie? Once you start doing it, you get hooked on it. It just makes all the colors pop. And actually, I'm going to, to Wendy's defense, I probably should have used, like, charcoal brown for the leaf one. I think that would actually be really pretty. But we're going with black because that's what's available right now in front of me. I'm going to cut one more piece here. I just have to use my paper cutter to cut it down. I'm going to cut one more. Somebody asked me why I didn't have all my pieces cut ahead of time. And um, bless their heart, it must have been the first time they ever watched me live because all of you that have been here for a long time know that I don't prepare I am very ill prepared for whatever is going to happen on this show. And uh, you guys are right there with me. <laughs> Not ill prepared. You guys keep me on track. Okay. So now I think that let's just take a look here. Oh, the sweater one is so cute. I really feel like I want to use that too. Wouldn't that be cute? We could do a Christmas card out of that. Let's do a Christmas card out of that. Let's do an autumn card out of this one. Let's do a Christmas card out of this one. Uh-oh, Sammy, do you see what's happening here? I'm going to end up making four cards right now. They're going to be very simple cards, but isn't that sometimes what we want when we're making mass-producing holiday cards, just something really super simple? So um, we'll make two really super simple Christmas cards, and then we'll... Uh, We'll make the other ones just a little more complicated. Not complicated, but have more stuff going on. So you know what that means for you? Yes. You have to pick more winners because we've got more cards to give away. Yep. Okay. And I want to remind you guys, I've been giving away my cards um, at the end of each show. But... If, uh, you know, if you left and you're not sure if you were the winner, you can always go to my YouTube channel and check out the winners just in case. Okay, so let me move all this out of the way. And I was playing with something new here. So I'm going to flip this around to the regular side. So for this one, I know that I need a big, bold stamp. So I feel like we need to do that stamp. This is Natural Silhouettes. One of my favorite um, silhouette style stamp sets that we have. And I feel like that's going to be really pretty on here. I feel like we could do that. It's a lot of feeling in this. <laughs> I feel like we could do that and maybe do um, just a little strip sentiment underneath, something smaller than that. So we'll, we'll leave a little bit of room. These are really going to be simple cards, but that's okay. I am the queen of simplicity. I love simple stamping. I think it it's just fun. You can knock out a lot of cards. You can try a lot of different things. And so why not do it? So I'm using some black onyx, onyx ink, and I'm going to stamp this right over that cool placemat texture. I'm using my Chucky tool. If you're new to Gina K Designs and Stamp TV and all of this going on here, um, this is a tool that my friend Chuck Meadows made for me. He invented this thing. It's called the Chucky tool. We call it that, name it after him. Uh, he made it out of a curtain finial and a furniture protector pad. And you just glide it over the surface of your Misty. And it actually really helps to... Um, 
sorry, I'm looking at greetings at the same time. It really helps to stamp things more easily. So, what is this? Hope you have a great birthday. Your friendship means so much to me. So this is, what stamp set is this, Sammy? Is this spring tulips? Uh, yes. All right, I'm going to use your friendship means so much to me. And I'm going to stamp that right down here at the bottom. Make sure that's straight and over enough. Okay. I definitely want a magnet there. I love these kinds of strip sentiments that can just go quickly over the bottom of the card. I hope it's straight. It should be straight. I not used this greeting yet, so it may need to be stamped more than once. We'll see. Just a little chucky action there. <laughs> that looks nice, huh? That looks really nice. Yeah. So that's a very simple card. And I like these sometimes, you know, when you're looking for that card, maybe somebody's struggling a little bit and you just want to let them know that you're there for them and you don't want it to be real busy. That's just real pretty and simple. So that'll be one card. We're, we're making fast cards today. I have to remember all the stamp sets I use. <laughs> okay, so for the Christmas ones, this one, I'm going to get one of our bigger Christmas sets out of here. Let's see what I have in this box. What's the Christmas greeting one that I really like? Do you know? Um, it's so nice to have you here because Tom would never know. There, well, there's, look, there's a, like a Scripty saying one. I think it's called Scripty Holiday. Right, um, Scripty Holiday. There's another one that I'm thinking of, and I can't think of it. Is it Mary and Brett? No. No. Seasonal greetings or something like that? Seasonal holly jolly. That one. Okay. I think I want to use the Merry Christmas in this one. But I think you're right. I think there's another one, but I can't think of the name of it. So I'm going to use this big, bold greeting here. I think I'll do that. I could also use this. Have a holly jolly Christmas going down the side. But I'll use that for the snowflake one. Wouldn't that be pretty on the snowflake one down the oh, side? Okay. So... <laughs> Oh, the Chucky tool reminds you of the Chucky doll. Yeah, I know. Every time I say that, I think of that too. We'll just put this right here at the bottom. Because this really feels like Christmas to me. I know it's not really Christmas colors. It just looks like a Christmas sweater. And I think anything can be a Christmas card if you add a Christmas greeting. Because the, uh, the colors, people are getting more bold with their Christmas colors. I've seen people do like all pink. For Christmas. Why not? Can do anything. There we go. Well, that's fun. Isn't that bright and fun? That'll be a fun little card. We could add some rhinestones to that, or we can add some sequins. Okay, we're getting there. We'll get these all on card bases and so what Sammy is doing now is she's going through all the comments and she's randomly dropping her mouse on your comments to pick names. And uh, we always try to pick a Facebook person and a YouTube person. But today we're going to have four different cards. So, all right, we're going to use have a holly jolly Christmas right here. You guys know I always like to stamp my greetings in black, although a card like this, you definitely could do it in another color if you wanted. So, and I like using our dye ink for greetings, um, although our amalgam ink is very crisp. So if you have really super skinny greetings and you want something very crisp, the amalgam ink works great for that. But so does our dye ink. And so... I like it because it dries really quickly. And I have a real problem with smearing black ink. I've always had that problem. Look how fun that is. Love that one. Okay. And then we'll do this last one, this fall one. 
And I feel like, ooh, I did a little gloop there. That's all right. Whoever gets this, I apologize for that. And let me see here what we can do with this. Let's see if we can dry that. Wet hands, you know. That will be my signature right there. I'll put my signature in there over that. Sorry about that. Now, if I was creative, if I was like Mindy Egan, I would get a wet paintbrush and I would splatter that color all over it and that would be part of it. But I'm not that creative. I can think of it, but I, you know, doing it is a whole different thing. So I think what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to go all out on this card. I'm going to get a little piece of vellum here. I'm going to cut it down to about two inches by five inches. And I'm going to place it right on top of this panel. And then I'm going to use a die cut word. So let's see. We can go into the box here and see if there's any already die cut. Here's one. So we could use wishes. And maybe if we have the word autumn somewhere, we could use that. I'm going to cut this down a little bit. It's got something on it. Something. Like it doesn't matter because I already have another glop. But. I'm giving this to somebody and I want them to have somewhat of a nice card. So now this is just a little bit thinner. Wishes. And what I did here is I cut out the word wishes and I cut it a couple times and then I layered them all together. So it's kind of thick and it feels more like an embellishment. You can see how thick that is. I don't know if you can see that, but that's pretty thick. So let's find an autumn stamp set. Oh my gosh, Autumn. Do we have anything called Autumn? No. No. Uh, anything with an Autumn greeting? Let's see. I'm going through all my stamp sets. So this might change. This definitely might change. Uh, let's see. How about if we use this stamp set? This is the Wishes stamp set. It's got the word Autumn in there. So we'll go with that because this matches. See, that matches that. So we'll do a tiny little um, die cut here. Excuse my reach. I think I'm going to do it on black. Well, I could do it on white, though. White might be nice. Let's do it on white. I'll just take a little piece of cardstock here, and I'll get the word autumn onto a block. I think white will be pretty. Although black might be more striking. I don't know. What would you guys do? Would you do a black flag or a white flag? I'd like to know what you guys think. I am kind of going for the look of falling leaves, Dawn. So let's go with autumn here like that. People would do black, huh? More people would do black. Mm. So you're saying I should do it on a black piece of cardstock? Well, maybe you're right. Maybe I should. Okay, I'll do it on black. I'll listen. Why not? I know we're going over, but Sammy, do I ever not go over anymore? I, you've been going over quite a lot lately. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I don't think anyone minds. Everyone keeps saying that you can take all the time you want. Okay, that's good. All right. So thank you, Sammy. <laughs> Sammy's being supportive and saying I can take all the time I want. Okay, Sammy, just so you know, next time you're definitely getting on a microphone. Okay. 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 <laughs> okay, so I had to go under the table to find my white ink cube. I'm going to use my white ink cube for this. I think I'm going to use a combination, actually. I think I'm going to use a little Versamark first to make it extra sticky. I'm going to use a little Versamark. And then I'm going to just tap it a little bit with the white pigment ink. And then I will stamp it. There we go. Okay. Now let me get some white embossing powder on here. Such a fine greeting. So here we go.
We're going to cut this out with Master Layouts 3, the tiniest little flag die. Now, I just wasn't sure which one would look better, but it seems like most people... Why did I do the white ink? Donna, I did the white ink because sometimes with these fine little greetings, if you miss a tiny little bit of it with ink, then um, it looks like it's broken up. The greeting doesn't look as crisp. So by adding a little bit of white ink, it kind of fills everything in. So if there's a little spot that got missed, the white ink kind of picks up what's missing there. And it helps make it a little bit more solid. Okay. Yeah, black and white is classy. You're, you're, you're right, Linda. I agree. Okay, let me move this up a little bit. And then Master Layouts 3 was around here somewhere. Here it is. I keep my master layouts in these stencil pockets, and we have more of these coming, but our manufacturer has been out of stock for a little while. So I'm gonna cut this out here. And you can always tape that down if you're worried about it not staying straight. I'm gonna take my chances here. Simon, are you still here? Your, your blocks have really made for a fun video for me today, this stamping foam have made for a super fun video for me today. So thank you for your ingenuity and in bringing this amazing product to all of us crafters. Okay, so here we go. We'll assemble this card. I think I can zoom in a little bit here so we can see the assembly here. And then we just need card bases for these things. Master layouts do not come on a magnetic board. Only the stamp, only the die sets that coordinate with our stamp sets come on a magnetic board and the full sets. Okay, so I'm getting very low on tape and that always makes me nervous. So let's put this down. We're gonna try to ignore that little spot. I'll call Mindy later and find out what I should do. And then I'm going to wrap this around the center. I'm going to go just a little low of center, if that makes sense. Okay. And then this is the way I like to attach vellum to my cards. I like to attach it on the back. I know that they make great vellum tapes, but for some reason I still struggle with it showing through. And you have to be kind of strategic where you tape things. Like if I was gonna tape this vellum down, I would tape it like right where I was going to place this flag so you wouldn't see the tape. So we could do autumn wishes like that. It's kind of cute, right? Oh, why am I not all in the screen? There we go. Okay, so let's get some connect glue. We'll do a little of that. We'll do some connect here on the back. This is a little bit of a thicker die cut, so I don't have to use my finger today. And remember, our glue goes on white, but it dries clear. So if it gets a little bit outside of the design on the vellum, it'll dry and you won't even see it. There we go. This is gonna need extra padding, this card, Sammy, when we send it to whoever wins. So I hope you guys are hanging in there for to find out who wins. I'll have this go off a little bit to the side here. And then we'll tape this right on the vellum up here. And then we need an embellishment. So you guys know when I use these uh, this kind of thing. I wanna use one of these black little hearts. We have these black and white hearts in our collection and I love them so much. I use them to dot so many of the eyes in my cards. There's my glue case, there we go. So we'll get a heart on here. Like that. There we go. Now for card bases for these, let me just put this aside. I'll put that aside and let's assemble these. I really think that white card bases would be really pretty for all of these. Of course, you could go with any of the colors in the, um, in the ink blending, but there's something about a white card base that just doesn't take away from 
color blends, when you have a lot of color blends. Although this one that's very, very subtle that was made with this um, basket, that could go on a brown card base or a tan, a sandy beach. You can even see like up against this craft card stock that looks really nice. But I will cut a couple white card bases quickly here just so that we have them. I'm going to do um, half sheets. So we'll do the horizontal fold because I don't have my big paper cutter up here. So we'll do the uh, five and a half by eight and a half. And then let me get my score, buddy. Where'd she go? Where'd the score buddy go? Here she is. And we'll just score these real quick and we'll assemble the cards and we'll review them one more time while Sammy is choosing the other two winners because now we know that we're going to have four winners of cards today. Sammy, make sure you get their names, the spelling of their names too for me so that I can put it in the description. Okay. And just a special shout out again to Sammy today for all of your hard work and your help. I pulled her away from a very important job that she was doing in a panic and um, she's willing to learn how to do anything. So now I know I always have a backup. But um, for the next one, Sammy, could you quick learn how to play guitar? I can try, <laughs> not make any promises. But... She's not making promises, but you know, knowing her, she'll give it a try. <laughs> All right, so we'll get this one on first. And when you're attaching a card that has vellum, always run some tape runner over your vellum as well. All right, so that is so pretty. Oh, yes, that's a pretty card. Let me back out a little. I feel like it's so close and you can't really see all the other cards being made here. So there's one. Here's the second one. You can see how that black really just makes the image pop, especially on this one because that image is silhouette. I really like that look. Here's the second one. Here's my little Christmas sweater. I tried to tape it with the remote. The Christmas sweater. And also as we go, make a note of who won what. <laughs> And then this really fun snowflake one. I love this one. You just can't get that look from the stencil and you can't get that look from a stamp. It, it's like the stamping foam is like the only way to do it. So there is the final card. Clean that up a little bit. There we go. All right, so have a holly jolly Christmas, still Christmas in July. Merry Christmas. Your friendship means so much. And autumn wishes. All right, Sam, you can go to my front shot if you want. So do we have winners? We do. do you have them written down? You're going to bring them to me? Oh, my goodness. Here we go. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay. All righty. So the first winner, let's give away the first card that we made, which was um, this one. This is going to be the um, the one that was made with the placemat, the friendship. Your friendship means so much. This is going to go to Michelle Welsh, and she is watching from Facebook. So congratulations, Michelle. You're going to get this card in the mail. So I have, are you writing that down? Yeah. Can you write that down? <laughs> okay. And then, um, so the second card we're going to give away is the Merry Christmas, the one that I said looks a little bit like a sweater. And this viewer is watching from YouTube, and it's Gloria Cosaboon, C-O-S-S-A-B-O-O-N. Gloria, you win this one. Okay, and then we're going to give away the Snowflake card, another Christmas card. This is another YouTube viewer. We have more people people watching on YouTube today, and um, oh, you know what? I am. I did not even. I've got your cards all mixed up here, Sammy. That's okay. I'm gonna change them up here, okay? Since them. okay, all right. So uh, let me just put this down. Place, Matt. Sorry, I didn't even see that next to there. And Gloria won the sweater card. Okay. So this one, the snowflake one, this one is for YouTube viewer 
Patty Akira Ortiz. So Patty, this is going to you. Woohoo! Okay. And then the final card, the Falling Leaves card with the Autumn Wishes goes to YouTube viewer Leslie Leslie. So you get to win this one, Leslie. So congratulations to all of you. Um, what I would have you do is just send a quick email to our customer service department info at GinaKDesigns.com and let them know which card you won and they will get that addressed to me and I will get these cards out to you right away. I will also put all the names of the winners and which cards they won in the description at YouTube. Now, if you're watching on YouTube, I'd love you to give this video a thumbs up. Also, check out my channel. You can subscribe to my channel. It's Gina K Designs. And there's a community tab there. After every video, I put up high quality pictures of the cards that I made so you can get a closer view right on my community tab on YouTube. I also share them in our Facebook group over at the Gina K Designs and Stamp TV Friends Facebook group. All right, you guys. Well, this was so much fun. Thanks for moving the day and joining me here on Stampin' Chat Live. Uh, we'll be back on Monday with our release party. So it's going to be a longer live Monday night starting at 7 o'clock, a two-hour live. Uh, almost two hours with our illustrators and we have a brand new kit and lots of new fun products to show you and some new card projects. So I hope to see you there. All right. In the meantime, stay safe, stay healthy. I love you all so very much. And Sammy, you're going to go to the slide after this. I love you all so very much and I'll see you again real soon. Mwah. Okay. Bye-bye.